Hello and welcome to Ephemera Files with Tommy. This is a little different view than you're used to seeing. This is my current studio. It is where I do my crafts. It is where I plan. It is where I do creating and sorting and I go through my mail here. I hoard a ton of things as you'll see. And the next thing I'll be doing in this space is moving it. So I thought I would give you a before, a before tour, and then I'll let you in on some exciting news. The first thing you see when you walk into this room usually is this desk right here, my studio table. My husband created that for me. These are aluminum, um, aluminum tubing parts. The other side is open and you'll see that and it has glass all across the top. It's like just a gigantic light box if I need to use it for that. Glass also cleans up extremely easily and well and I love it. I love being able to work on the glass and just clean it off and not worry about my products ruining my surface. Underneath of this desk, you will see one of the cube, the nine square cube pieces that you can get from Walmart or Target or online. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I have it front and back filled with old books and some papers and a couple of baskets of goodies so that I have, a, I have doubled my storage on that just by using front and back. And by putting it under the desk, it frees up a lot more space. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right over here I have a bowl of jewelry supplies that I still need to sort through because I rearranged my beading storage. Behind it is a magazine rack where I have my loose leaf scrapbook papers and they're sorted according to whether they are regular or cardstock or specialty like foiled or um, cut out or large pieces of printed vellum. Those pieces are all 12 by 12. I have another place that I keep my um, 8 by 12, 8 by 12, 9 by 12, whatever the, the normal sheet count is. <clears throat> Moving in a little bit, I love this rug that I got for $5 at Five Below. It's just a rag rug, but it has pieces of sari in there and different very special fabrics and it just feels really good under my feet and it's a bright pop of color as soon as you come in. To your left when you come into this room as it stands I have this old CD case that I repurposed. It is the perfect depth for holding lots of these little books. I have I have a thing about journals. I grab journals all the time my marker storage is here and then down here I have a collection of hymnals and I think that there's an encyclopedia and a couple of other books. I have a little paper mache box here where I collect my cards that I have received. Up here this basket holds post-it notes and it is jam-packed full of post-it notes. And then I just decorated on the top this little container here holds plastic bags for my little beads and jewelry findings and it just makes me happy to look at that. I love that little arrangement. Swinging over here, I'm going to have to back up a little bit. This is the closet and we took the doors off. They were just hollow core doors and I hung these curtains. Now they're actually shower curtains. You can see at the bottom they're a little short. I need to add a little something to them. I have these brass hooks. This is on a tension rod that goes inside of the door. So you don't have holes on the outside. And I love the shower hooks that I have on it. If you can see them, they're open on one side so I can hang things on them, which is very good with helping me store some things that are delicate or I just don't want to get in the way. Opening up the curtains, you'll see some more storage. I have my large fabric pieces that I use for making book covers and such. 
hanging on pant hangers. I have my small ironing board here along with a bag full of Velcro. That keeps it up out of the way and I don't lose where it is. Down here on the side, I have taken tension rods across the side and hung up more of my pieces of fabric. Let's see if I can get past this. There we go, past the blue velvet there, or suede. Underneath, I have a small bookcase. It's only two feet by nine inches deep, but it holds these little storage baskets. It holds <laughs> more journals. I told you I had a problem. Down at the bottom, where it's not so neat, those are three ring binders where I have some of my die cuts and some of my stencils and stamps in. That needs to be reorganized. On top of it, I have a wooden bowl that I have. I love these. I'm just going to pull this out. I bought some of those Tim Holtz um, daubers. Blending tools. Blending tools with the little stick and the little pad on it. I like these much better. Maybe it's because I haven't figured out how to use the Tim Holtz ones yet. But these, I think, are some type of a cosmetic sponge. I don't know. I was given several sheets. They came all together in a sheet. You can see the little points where you tear them apart. And I think that they work very well. They give a really soft edge when you are um, just dyeing the edges. They work through stencils very well. Although I have another tool I found for my stencils that I really like. And I'll share that with you. Here in this desk organizer, I have some odds and ends that I will use for my junk journals, pieces of cardboard, copy paper, an old cookbook that I found that I really like just that pattern on there, so I will probably figure out how to use that. All kinds of index cards, different colors, different ages. Some of them are already old, so I don't even have to age them at all. Right here, I have a box from a deck of cards because I already have the deck of cards over in my ephemera basket. I am trying to figure out what I can do with this box. It is from 1965. It's even older than I am. Here is another box that I'll use for storage and some odd fabric pieces that I haven't put away yet. This is a game that I got to take apart to put into uh, journals and such and a Random roll of wallpaper trim, also for journaling. I'm pretty sure that's the Wright Brothers plane right there. Next to this, I have a bag with pom-poms hanging on the end of this shelf. These are just simply the wire shelves that come when you build a new house. We built this house in 2007, and we still have those shelves in it. This is my bag of bags. I have gift bags. I have small bags like this. I have colorful bags. I have uh, grocery bags. All kinds of bags are in that bag. In my, one of my sewing machines, this would be my sewing machine for sewing clothing and other large fabric items is right there. And I pull it out when I need it because I don't need it very often. Here I have an old rickety two drawer cab filing cabinet that I've had for maybe oh my goodness 20 years <coughs> and it's <coughs> noisy and probably needs to be replaced. I have a whole bunch of uh, happy planner stickers in here, any kind of a tall sticker, my illustrated faith books, Heidi swap books, things like that. If it's in a book it's in here in this drawer so I can stand it upright and see the name that I've written on the edge, except for these. You can't write on that, but I know that they're the Tim Holtz uh, small talk type stickers. In the top, I have my toolbox. I have gloves, I have measuring tape, and a level, and clamps. I use these clamps a lot making my journals. On top of that, I have a basket where I have clipped these small sticker pads onto a, a, oh, a book ring? That's not the right term, but I can't think of it right now. My 12 by 12 paper pads that are still intact are all up here. And I can flip through them just like this and I know what's in each of them. And it's fairly easy to get out. I just pull this basket out, take out the pad and shove it back in. 
Here I have some specialty, um, it's not really a paper, but this is, uh, this is mock croc, and I think that I have a couple of others. No, all I have left is the green. I need to be using that up. Next to this, I just purchased some wrapping paper for projects and sat it there. I have here in the bottom drawer is a bunch of tissue paper, gift wrap tissue paper. Tissue paper. Middle drawer, oh, some of my tissue paper made it up there. I'll just take that out real quick and put it in the right place. These are all napkins. I use a lot of napkin applique, especially in Bible journaling entries or um, gift cards for friends or on making tags. I also have some sheets in here because I don't have it all pulled out of the um, dryer sheets and color catcher sheets that I have talked about in another video. Whoops, I'm sorry about the camera, Jocelyn. I lost my balance there. And then in the top one here, all kinds of tapes, packing tape, photo corners, um, glue dots, all kinds of adhesives that I would use in journaling or in planning or gift and card making. Here I have a board. I have two boards. I use this one for uh, rough projects where I'm going to be hammering nails through things or doing different you know, just heavy duty. And I can't do that on a glass top table and I can't do it on this old carpet. So I have this board and it's been through a lot, but it works very well. I have a bead sorting tray and then I have a littler cutting board that I can use when I need a hard surface, but it doesn't have to be quite so tough. All right, moving to the shelf above that. I have these trays that I got from Dollar Tree. I have my 9 by 12 papers, full papers here, standard. I have here some cardstock papers. I have more 12 by 12s here. Here I have vellum. Oh, these are, let's see, this is standard paper. This is cardstock that's in packages. This is loose cardstock. This is vellum. These are other specialty papers like my handmade brass papers, um, a coffee filter, vellum that's printed with stars, all kinds of vellum, some mulberry paper down here. Up here are the large scraps of my paper. That's not, that's not, that's too big to put into my little scrap basket. That's too big to put into my scrap basket but I'd want them to have a home. Up here is kind of, it's caught things because this was from a baby shower. This is a little photo album that I'm not sure what I'm doing with it yet. Sorry, this is the photo album. My camera went down. And let's see, I got these little packets that I probably will not use them for what they're meant. But I like all the parts that came in it. It was $1.99 and then it was on the purple clearance at Tuesday morning. Next to this, I have a handmade book, book I have, what is this? Is that a paper pad? Oh no, this is, this is something I haven't quite figured out what to do with yet. I also got it at Tuesday morning. I've used a few out of it, but I would like to not waste so much of the paper that it looks like will get wasted if I simply do it the way it says on the back. I have an acrylic clipboard, which is very flimsy, so it'll probably be part of an art project. My really large stencils are up here, along with another book of stencils. Uh, T-shirt transfer paper, and um, for a photo album, refill pages, and I probably won't use them in a photo album because I don't really have any that use that, but the pages will work well in a journal. These are all stickers. These are stickers that are sorted by color, by type, I have the blingy type here. I've got some that are three-dimensional up here. I've got alphas that are black-white. I've got alphas that are metallic, alpha, all the other colored alphas, just all kinds of things like that because I like my stickers to be sorted so I don't have to dig through a whole bunch of stuff to find what I want. Let's see, in this bag I have my paper, my handmade paper making kit. 
it's hard to get down with one hand, so I'm not gonna pull it down. But that's hanging in that bag, just on a hanger. A little storage idea. Oh, there's my little rat skeleton for another project that I'm doing at a nature center. Let's see, and this basket, I believe has, yes, odds and ends of fabric. Like I bought this skirt for a dollar and I'm gonna tear it up into ribbons so that I can use them in journals. Here are the, um, this is a baby wipe that I used to clean inks and I just loved the colors. Fabric softener sheets that I dyed and I use in a lot of things. Let's see, I have, oh, these fabric samples. These are upholstery samples. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing with them yet. Oh, look how pretty that goes together though. Oh my goodness, all those colors are picked up in, well, there we go. I may have another idea for a journal. And then up top, I have three little guitars, all of which are broken, all of which are waiting for me to complete the project. I have a box of something that I don't know what it is right now, but it's up there and I'm sure it's a craft supply of some sort. Oh, I think that's my rock tumbler. I have a bag of fluff for stuffing. Those two little wastebasket type things are full of patterns, sewing patterns. And then I have my uh, salad spinner up there that I use for making some of my art projects. That is a full, busy closet. And that's only one wall into our tour. Right here are some of the uh, color catcher sheets that I've talked about that have such lovely colors and they work a lot like fabric. Right here beside my closet, I have this hook with this apron that was made by my beautiful friend, Julie, when she discovered that I did not own an apron. It's got a couple of paint splotches on it. It's fairly new. I'm sure it will gather more. I have more aprons for guests, including my grandchildren who like to do art with me and I love doing art with them. On the back of the door, I store extra bags. My husband calls me a bag lady says I'm incurable. I don't mind. Here I have storage, and this is a ribbon storage system here where it has, this is, I believe, from We Are Memory Keepers. It has these little clips that slide onto these bars, and you can hold your ribbons. I keep paper ribbon. Let's see, this is like raffia. Um, this is just a very metallic mesh. I have very thin ribbons on here. Let's see, these are felt ribbons. These ribbons are too large. That ribbon has buttons on it, and I'm telling you all this for a reason. This is a paper ribbon. These ribbons store well here because they don't store well, and they don't store well on my other ribbon storage system that you'll see in a moment. This was a project, let's see, that I need to get finished because it is we are big Purdue people. My husband has a signed poster, so I need to get it put into that frame before it gets ruined. I have a couple more tension rods because I'm always using them to hang things. I have some bamboo pieces and the tripod for my camera. Here is my washi storage. And after trial and error, many, many times over, I have found that this one works really well. What I would like to do is sort it by color, at least if not sorted a little bit further down like my stickers are, but that's a little ambitious for right now. And <laughs> I found these in my closet and I don't have a clue why I bought them. They're Halloween decorations. I don't know. I don't know what to do with them. I don't know whether to get rid of them because as soon as I get rid of them, I'll remember what I bought them for. I don't know. I have an idea that it was for a costume, but again, I'm not sure. This is the part of the next wall going to the next corner. I store my uh, lace hankies and tablecloths and vintage gloves in this little three-tier basket that I think is so cute. The top here is largely decorative. I have some things in that basket. I have my uh, wooden alphas in this three-tier cupcake basket. I have my book binding supplies in there in that hound's tooth basket. Um, and it works very well like that. I have right here 
is my block stamp storage. It is a letterpress tray. Underneath, I have a box that is also um, stamps. I don't, let's see. I think that they're also wooden stamps. They're from Stampin' Up! and it's simply alphabets. You will find cute little decorative things all the way through because I like cute little decorative things. It's so exhausting being fabulous. Right here I have my acrylic stamp storage. I do not have all of my stamps in here yet. Like I said, some of them are over in the uh, in the bottom of that bookcase in the closet in the binders because I haven't transferred everything over yet. I have a lot of stamps and I'm still trying to figure out the best way to store them so that I can use them. This basket here has a bunch of these little vases that I got from Dollar Tree. They hold pencils, watercolor pencils, uh, drawing pencils, my paint brushes, painting tools. Let's see, more drawing pencils back there. One of these is specifically that the grandkids know that they can use because my Derwent is a little too expensive for them to be messing with. Let's see, second shelf. I have unsorted things. I got these at the Target Dollar Spot, and they are just banners. Let's see if I can turn one over. It's just a banner. And it simply has these two little holes and the string. It's already a strung banner, but it's white on the back. Perfect journaling cards. I'll have to pick those others up in a moment. This basket here holds tags and envelopes of all kinds, shapes, sorts, all kinds of stuff in there. These baskets that look like this are very similar in what their contents are. These are all cards, game cards, postcards, art cards. These are from my friend Tamara Carroll. She does prophetic art painting and she made them into a deck of cards. And they're absolutely gorgeous. I haven't been able to part with any of them yet. Let's see. Oh, extra ribbons that I haven't put up yet. Here's my ribbon storage. I take the clothespins, the peg type clothespins that are that look like this, and I wrap the ribbon around it and secure it with a little uh, straight pin. And that works for most of my ribbon. This is actually a seam binding that I've washed. It works for some of the pins get pretty covered. Some of them have just a very little on it. This is Rick Rack. Those other ribbons just would not cooperate with the clothespin. So they got a different home. Here are my Prima Flowers and Feathers. This is the Flowers and Feathers basket. You see all kinds of things in there. Some of them are still in packages and some are down loose. I like having them all here. They're not all Prima. I don't know why I said Prima, probably because that first package I saw had that name on it, but yeah, I love those. And I need to get them in order because some of them are frontwards and some are backwards and it's hard to flip through. These are all kits that I need to get caught up on, caught up on from By the Well for God and Creative Retreat. This is where I got a bunch of this lovely paper here because By the Well for God wraps your monthly packet. This is actually a, an extra one that I ordered that I'm going to do a giveaway on. But they wrap it in this lovely wrapping paper and I've used, I think I've used except for that piece, all of the wrapping paper I've gotten so far. So I'll be looking for some more. Down here I have other tools. These are the, let me just grab them. These are the mini ink blending tools that I'm not sure that I like. And the thing is, I thought I would love them, and so I bought I bought that, and then I bought the refills for all my inks, and I'm not sure I like it. These are all just application tools, whether I'm painting or I'm uh, making backgrounds. Um, these don't usually get used for ink, but those are in there because I didn't have room. These are makeup sponges. They are good for everything. Next to that is my glitter and sequins. And yes, there's a lot because glitter runs in my veins. This is embroidery floss, uh, twines, just different threads, 
crochet threads, things like that. This tub here is all watercolors. Watercolor and gouache, since gouache is like a watercolor, it's very similar. It acts this very similarly. Um, I would suggest trying this. These washable crayons react with water. So you may get a whole new technique that you like out of something that is in the school supplies. Don't look over anything just because it says it has to be used for one thing. You can use it for a lot more, I bet. And here are my other paints. I have acrylics and I have some oils in here. I don't think I have... Oh, and then I have different specialty toppings, but most of it is acrylic paint. Here is my bin with my felt. All of my felt is in there. This bin is mostly lace, except for I have tulle and muslin right on the top. Well, maybe it's not mostly lace. Hmm. I think my lace got sorted. There is some lace in here, but I think a lot of my lace I've sorted into a couple of other categories as well. So, there's that. on top. This bin has tablecloths and curtains and placemats and all of those goodies that I use in my journaling and other creative outlets. These are those curtains that I keep telling you about that I got for a dollar and I got a bunch of them. And this lace is gorgeous. And I still have a couple packets left. This bin may be going away because I rarely use anything in it. It's all wood pieces. Most of which I don't even know why I have. Here's the bo a box of the things. I still have my stuff that I took to camp for the kids to make their junk journals still out. I haven't sorted it and put it away. In this drawer, this is another one of those drawers just like the cube drawers. I have my fancy scissors and embossing folders. And this is one of my cutters. I have two cutters here. This is a circle cutter. This is a fancy ribbon threading cutter. This one has my die cuts. And if my die cut has a matching stamp, it's probably in there too. I say probably because I make no guarantees. These, this is my fastener drawer. Binder clips, little paper clips that are sorted by colors, little brads, whole bunch of brads that spilled and so I just dumped it all in there. These are my punches. Not all of them. This is the bottom drawer of punches. And then this is the top drawer of punches. This right here is a little box of jewelry that was in a bigger box of games that I had bought from somebody on Facebook Marketplace and that was just included. I got some rub-ons at Goodwill for 69 cents a piece. Tim Holtz rub-ons for 69 cents a piece. That was amazing. This little deal here, I got for $5. It's kind of like a pyramid shape. And right now, it's disorganized. I have my metal pieces. And I think every drawer is metal pieces. I need to get it organized and get it sorted. This is not metal pieces. These make, these are meant for your fingernails and they make great little accents on your craft projects in your books and such. And then I have just some mixed items up here that need to be put away. Right here I have some film strip, the Tim Holtz film strip. I have this whole case of bulb pins right here that is in a bunch of different colors that I got from Amazon and some tassels and things. This right now is my ink storage. I think that it used to be a cassette tape holder. Moving over is kind of, a, whoops, sorry about the camera, kind of an um, inspiration board, kind of a I don't want to lose this uh, place. This is a changing table that I literally pulled out of somebody's gar garbage and put it on a wagon and pulled it down the street to my house. Makes a great work table. And right here I have one of my journaling Bibles 
and underneath it, I have a little box that has specific items for entries that I want to make. Here, I have a couple of books that I've got set aside for a special project. This is a basket of some journaling cards that I have already made. That's farther away than it looks when I'm reaching from behind the camera. These are my travel pens or pencils, watercolor and coloring pencils. This is some extra fleece that's out for another project. And then I have different things in, in each of these totes. This one has my die cutting and embossing machines. This one has other electronics like my um, laminator, my label makers, things like that, heating tools. So my iron is down there, my, um, my little pink dryer goes in there. For some reason, I've lost the name of it right this moment. And in here are projects that I've got sorted into bags so that I have all the pieces so that when I've got time to do a project, I just pull it out of there. That basket under there is the next project in line to be done because I have another basket that has the next project, the current project. Oh, and I didn't show you this. This is one of my other journaling Bibles. It's pretty chunky, pretty full, still has room. Turning the corner, we have my window with my view outside. My sewing machine, this is an old sewing machine base with a new sewing machine on top, has a glass top on it as well. My yarn collection, my scissors that are only for fabric and so they're not anywhere near my other scissors so that nobody grabs them by accident. This basket here is my sewing basket for when I need to hand sew. Beside me is this, it was listed as a dresser is not a dresser. It's way too small. Look at the size of these drawers. But it works very well for my bead storage and for my die cut storage. Let's see. Oh, and those are even other embellishments. Those are buttons. And then I have die cut storage right here. It holds a lot. And this top part is separate from the bottom part so I can arrange it however I need. This is my Bible planner, my Bible study planner. This is just a photo album that I haven't done anything with yet, but it looks good. My desk supplies sit on top of it. I have more containers with paper clips and stamps and bottle caps and things like that. Let's see, we'll come to this side. These are, hmm, I think that this is just my, it's easier to tuck it there space than put it away. It's easier to tuck it there than put it away space. There we go. And I need to. I need to put it away. I need to sort through it. This shelf here and the other one over there that matches it, my husband made those for me as well. This is all aluminum tubing that the shelves are made out of. I have paint canvases. I have a lot of little tchotchkes up here. My long paint brushes. Brads are there. Books. Um, envelopes and wipes and different little card making supplies along with this over here has a nice my nice clipboard my um, art mats that can take the heat from my little heat tool down here oh those carrots are there for another project it looks funny just laugh if you want here I have things I grab frequently glue some markers some ink pens my lighter for a candle my charger tip for my uh, pen that goes to my iPad Pro. Beside that I have some stamps and some different little notepads and such. I used my heat tool recently so it's there. I have chalk and let's see those are chalks. These are my um, gelatos and a different one. It's kind of more like tempera paint. It was an off-brand at Michael's and it was meant for children and I'm like well I can try it. I have pastels and then my scrap basket this basket and these baskets all into this basket <laughs> all are paper ephemera for using in my junk journals receipt books notepads things like that different specialty paper packs envelopes and cards and then these two contain what would be trash, things you would throw away that I don't. 
And then over here I have a basket and let me think what's, I don't even recall what is in this basket. That makes me feel bad. Oh, my envelope punch, my air sprayer, uh, different tools like that, different small tools, my fuse tool. And then turning around, you see the biggest mess in the room. Here we go. My desk. It's full of stuff. Here's the other side of the nine square, the other books. I have an extra basket with extra paper pads and such that I'm not sure where to put yet. I have another bag of stickers. Those are my planner stickers because I don't have another one of those containers like I had the other ones in. This, this stool is really high. It's a bar type stool. And then I have my little footstool that fits underneath it perfectly so that when I'm sitting on it, I can reach the floor still. But my desk is at a height that I can stand and work. Underneath here, we have my ironing, my ironing board, quilt, cut, quilters cut and press. That's what it's called. I can see the name. And it just tucks down in there for when I need to use it. Here I have larger scraps that I need to move from the closet, the remainder of them over here, because I forgot that basket was there. I just did that. I just moved it there, so at least I have a reason. My large illustrating Bible that I've only done one entry in so far is under here. That keeps it kind of safe and out of the way. I replaced all the knobs on this little chest of drawers that I also pulled out of the trash. And in here I've got more chalks, more baggies, some more cards, all of my rings that I use, and some large mailing envelopes. In here I have more planner and organization type stuff stickers, ring hole enforcers, uh, labels. This one's empty and it's yucky. I need a little liner in it. And this one has ring binders and staples and little tiny staplers. On top of my desk, I love this. I know I got it at Hobby Lobby. I don't recall the brand name on it. And I keep thinking I need to make labels as soon as I figure out a way to do it. And then I think, oh, I've got stickers. And then I forget that I thought about it. And so I'm like, oh, I need to make labels. At some point I'll make labels. But this is all cutting. I've got it sorted, cord cutting, writing, tools, more tools, pokes and pulls, which is just how I label that because everything in there is a poke or a pull, and gluing. And then in the center I have my tall items. My rulers are all over here. I have magnifying glass. I have extra scissors here. Um, I have, this is a paper bead maker that is up there. I love that. That organization tool is beautiful. I love it. This is a file sorter and I have different projects in the works. The one that's on that shelf is currently right here in front of me or that was on that shelf. But I, these are all different journals that I have that I want to get done. And so as I'm collecting things, I put them in there. And then when I think I've got most of what I want to collect, I will start on the journal. This is a must. If you're a coffee drinker, get one of those candle warmer, coffee mug holder, whatever things. Keeps your coffee hot all day long. Let me move this basket. Here I have different bowls. I have a thing about bowls. I don't know why. Um, that all have little different items in them. My paint, my paper strips are all in there. I have two other of these jars that are behind there. They're empty. There's my iPad Pro, and I watch videos on it. I believe this one is Wendy. Hi, Wendy. I have little organization pieces over here just to keep tiny things. And I have a stack of papers that I need to pay attention to. This is for teaching at Michael's. I have one underneath it for teaching at Joann's. Just different papers I need to pay attention to. These are super important. My grandson made these. He's constantly making art for me to put in my journals. And this one I'm still trying to figure out how to add. But he's got to show me how to make them first so that I can make more. 
And let's see. Oh, I'll show you this. These are my tapes to show me where my camera is when I'm making videos so that most of the time I'll remain on, on screen and in frame. And this is part of our big announcement. I had to measure everything that's in this room that is a storage piece or takes up floor space. I had to measure another room. I got this little clipboard at Target Dollar Spot. To measure another room and its dimensions. And then I got on my PowerPoint and made a map of where everything is going to go in this other room because my husband and I are starting a new journey. Matter of fact, we took our first classes after our initial interview last night. We are going to be on the adventure of foster parenting. So, we're excited about that. I'm semi-excited about having to figure out how to move everything from this room to the new room. And I will take you on a tour of that room as soon as it is done. You are sure to hear a lot about whatever I can share when it comes to the fostering journey. We're very excited about it. And I hope that you're excited too, whether it's about children being taken care of, whether it's about seeing my old craft room or my new craft room, or just excited about people being excited. I do that. I get excited over people being excited. So, new tour coming up shortly, whenever I have everything moved into the other room. I love you all, and until next time, be kind, always.